Hi, I'm Bill Lees from UCL, University College London in England. And I'm going to talk to you today about quantification in the liver. The title of my talk is Beyond Morphology, Quantitative Ultrasound in the Liver. In the past, we've been quite good at diagnosing cirrhosis from a normal liver just using conventional ultrasound, particularly using high-frequency probes applied close to the surface of the liver. We can quite clearly see the difference between normal and abnormal uh, using the definition of cirrhosis as nodular change and regeneration within the liver. Regenerative nodules show quite clearly and allow a, a fairly definitive diagnosis, but we can't do fibrosis. There is an observation that we made a few years ago using certain ultrasound contrast agents, in this instance the original contrast levovist, where we can enhance the nodular pattern for reasons known not to us. Recently, We've seen the introduction of elastography in various forms. A compression of manual elastography has been difficult to apply in the liver because of the intervening abdominal chest wall. But the recent development of ARFI, acoustic radiation force imaging, has changed all of that. If we look at these Schlieren photographs of ultrasound beams, uh, we can see how the standard beam uh, produces a sharp uh, focus at some depth predetermined within the liver. Now, it's been noted that the force of the acoustic pulse can actually produce displacements within tissue. These displacements are very small, of the order of a tenth of a wavelength, uh, or a few tens of microns. But using tracking techniques similar to color Doppler, we can detect these displacements and show them as an elastogram. So by applying a push pulse, which you can see here, through the acoustic field, immediately followed by a detection pulse, uh, line by line, we can build up a full scan across the liver, uh, which is the elastogram, showing the degree of displacement that we've detected. This is ARFI, called Virtual Touch Imaging by Siemens, which is the technology that I have the most experience of. And we can see that we can detect hard, here shown as black, and soft, shown as white, often in areas where we can see very little on the conventional B-mode ultrasound scan. Uh, this relies on relative stiffness. Uh, we're detecting a, a hard, tumour in the presence of soft, normal surrounding liver. Obviously, with cirrhotic liver, a hard tumour in a hard liver will show no difference, so we won't get the, the contrast that we expect. Uh, the, the main use of this technique is to provide an additional contrast to the normal B-mode contrast in the liver, showing us lesions that are difficult to see on conventional B-mode. Here you can see a hard tumour in the hard abnormal surrounding liver, a situation we find often in the absence of cirrhosis. Patients on chemotherapy uh, frequently have uh, significant changes to the liver parenchyma, which diminishes the degree of contrast showing this tumour. Again, a similar example where we can see a small tumour hidden in an area of abnormal liver parenchyma. Uh, this technique behaves very much as we would expect uh, for detecting borders. And here we can see an HCC, where on the B-mode scan, even though we can detect the tumour very clearly, it's very difficult to define, except in this area here, where the exact borders of the lesion are. 
Here we can see on the Arfi elastogram, we can see the continuation of that well-defined border through an area where we cannot see it at all on the conventional ultrasound scan. This is a liver abscess which behaves in exactly the opposite way. These can often be very difficult to distinguish uh, from tumours uh, on B-mode ultrasound and historically uh, we have applied a needle biopsy to these uh, rather too frequently. But we can see here how the central part of the tumour is bright on the elastogram indicating softness and the surrounding liver parenchyma here is stiff compared to the background of a parenchyma indicating edema in the periphery of the abscess. So a useful way of discriminating in a qualitative sense between hard tumour and soft necrotic liver tissue. The technique of ARFI was originally developed uh, by physicists at Duke University where their main aim was to try and determine if they could use this to establish liver necrosis following RFA and other local ablative techniques. In my experience, this has been almost impossible. Here you can see an HCC immediately after RFA in the liver. Uh, there's really no discernible change uh, on either the ARFI or the B-mode ultrasound. In practice, we find uh, ultrasound contrast the most powerful technique. It shows us exactly where the zone of necrosis is and we can map that very precisely uh, to the enhancing tumour. And if we see enhancing nodules, we know we have to go back to perform more RFA. So in conclusion, the uh, virtual touch imaging, the Siemens uh, trade name, is useful as an aid to lesion visualisation. It provides an additional form of contrast, but it's unidimensional and we find it's only of very limited use for lesion characterization, except in the simplest way. It will characterize cysts, abscesses, and hemangiomas, but between different types of solid lesion, it gives very limited information. And we rely in my practice in England much more on ultrasound contrast to give us this additional information. But the uh, ARFI image is an independent parameter both to the B mode and the contrast enhanced ultrasound. So all in all, it gives us significantly more information. This is an example of the use of ultrasound contrast and it's often its superiority uh, over CT and MRI in characterizing small focal liver lesions. Here you can see a lesion that's been detected on CT in the arterial phase, it's strongly enhancing, suspicious for uh, an HCC, but in the portal venous phase, it's still enhancing, it's not showing early washout. So the differential diagnosis is between a small HCC or a high flow hemangioma. Now here we can see the same result after administration of ultrasound contrast. And if we look at the video of this, uh, we can see quite clearly that we have a, a blotchy peripheral enhancement immediately with centripetal filling of the central part of the lesion, the typical pattern of a hemangioma. The other point to bear in mind, and this video is not running in real time, is that this entire filling in process in this case takes less than 10 seconds. And we've discovered that the high speed kinetics of ultrasound contrast often give us information that we cannot get from CT or MRI unless we've just happened to choose the timing of our phases uh, by luck uh, to, be, to precisely fit. So the main use of this technique is to detect tumour in the background presence of an abnormal liver and to distinguish uh, rather iffy ultrasound features on B mode from tumour and no tumour. So detection rather than characterization. Uh, as you all know, we can use ultrasound contrast to detect perfusion and quantify perfusion uh, both in normal liver and HCC. 
And this is going to be an extremely powerful technique in the future, as I'll demonstrate later in the lecture. Now, uh, this technique of ARFI can be extended into a quantitative field. Uh, Siemens call this virtual touch uh, quantification. And here we can see a region of interest box placed within the substance of the normal liver parenchyma. The way this works is that once again we input a push pulse uh, which causes displacement through the liver. This is a longitudinal wave which as it passes through solid tissue will generate transient shear waves which travel at right angles to the direction of the longitudinal pulse and can be tracked by these minute displacements as they traverse the region of interest. And what we're actually measuring here <coughs> is not the presence or the displacement of the shear waves, but the speed of the shear waves as they traverse the box. So by measuring the time it takes to traverse a given distance, we can calculate the speed of these shear waves. And this is a function of the Young's modulus of the tissue, i.e. its stiffness. So we have a way of quantifying the stiffness of liver tissue in terms of its Young's modulus. Now the reason why we're interested in this is because in Western Europe and in the United States uh, there are major public health problems growing with chronic liver disease. The main one of these is HCV, which is really a hidden epidemic. We've no idea how many people in Western countries are infected with the HCV virus, but it's probably of the order of 1 to 2 percent. In some countries of the world, such as Egypt, up to 20 percent of the population are known to be infected. We also have a significant incidence uh, of alcoholic liver disease, which is rising, and with the increase in obesity in our populations, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is also a substantial problem. In Western Europe and North America, anything up to 50% of the adult population have a fatty liver which is obesity related. We know that 20% of these, even if they drink no alcohol, will progress to develop chronic liver disease. In 10% of that population, this will go on to full-blown cirrhosis with uh, parenchymal necrosis and nodule formation. And 10% of these, uh, which is approximately 1% of the entire population, will die from cirrhosis caused simply by fatty liver. And this has been well documented in epidemiological studies in both North America and in Western Europe. So it is a major public health problem. So there is a need uh, in clinical practice to develop accurate non-invasive tests to diagnose and stage liver fibrosis, which is the first stage of chronic liver disease, before patients develop full-blown cirrhosis. So we need tests that are accurate in the early stages that can show progression from one stage to the next, that can discriminate between fibrosis, fatty change and inflammation, the triad that pathologists can characterize on a liver biopsy. And if we're looking at large populations, then the test should be cheap, repeatable and reproducible and be performed in any clinical environment. Uh, there is already a device which uses uh, transient elastography uh, which can perform this task of, of measuring liver stiffness. This device is called a fibre scan, invented in France about 10 years ago, which uses a mechanical piston combined with an A-mode ultrasound scan to drive a shear wave impulse mechanically uh, through the abdominal wall into the liver. This obviously does not work so well in obese patients or it works not at all in the presence of ascites. Uh, this is the kind of data that is produced from Fibroscan, uh, looking at the stiffness results on the left, 
compared with the pathological staging, here using the ISHAC uh, staging scheme, six grades from normal to full-blown cirrhosis. And you can see there is a gentle exponential curve rising up to full-blown stenosis with a lot of overlap between the individual stages, but clear separation uh, between the normal and the more severe stages. This is an ROC curve of the same data, showing quite good results in severe fibrosis and in cirrhosis. Uh, we have performed a study in my own institution uh, looking at ARFI in approximately 300 patients uh, with 100 normal patients and other patients with various forms of liver disease as they typically present uh, in our liver clinic. Uh, please note that we had only one technical failure to achieve results in these 300 patients and the uh, technology has improved uh, since these early figures which I produced. We also had 10 patients in this study with fatty change with BMIs of greater than 40. Now there is a major problem in defining a normal population. As we've seen, if 50% of the population have a fatty liver, uh, we can't call patients normal if we simply take them off the street. So I've defined a normal population for this study as no history of liver disease, recent normal liver function tests, and a normal conventional ultrasound scan. But it's important to point out that even biopsy is not a gold standard. A biopsy samples approximately one fifty thousandths of the liver volume, and we know that hepatic fibrosis and cirrhosis is not uniformly distributed through the liver. So the, the liver biopsy, as a method of determining the bulk properties of liver tissue, is dominated by sampling error. Here's an example of a cirrhotic liver, where you can see uh, quite clearly variations in the degree of nodularity of the liver contour, frank scarring here in this area, and nodular regeneration and hypertrophy in the caudate lobe down here. Vast variations uh, between different parts of the liver would give you enormous variations uh, in the degree of fibrosis. So liver biopsy is not a true standard. It's invasive with some risk. As we've said, there is significant sampling error. Uh, there's also poor agreement between pathologists. And this uh, extends to the extent there are at least three different pathological staging schemes that you will come across in the literature. The ISHAC, the Metavir, and Nodal. And these are not linear products. These don't grade the degree of fibrosis. Uh, they are categorical products. They indicate specific morphological stages, such as bridging fibrosis, which is either present or not present. And because there's disagreement between pathologists, in any multicenter study that is performed, we would need to have a reference laboratory uh, with a, a dedicated group of pathologists working to a common standard. This is from a study done in my own institution uh, a few years ago, uh, where we actually measured the amount of fibrosis uh, within the liver uh, using uh, optical markers and optical uh, quantification techniques and compared that here with the ISHAC stage. And as you can see, as we go from no fibrosis to cirrhosis, if you take the column on the right, you can see in the, the first few stages there is very little increase in the bulk of, of fibrosis as we go from one stage to the next uh, with greater quantities of fibrosis in the later stages. So we end up with a sigmoid curve, which is the true quantity of fibrosis. So in our study population, we have a subgroup with uh, a very recent biopsy correlation and have quantified the fibrosis scores according to the ISHAC scale, which is what our own pathologists use. Uh, there is some argument about the measurement technique in ARFI. It hasn't been uh, completely standardized yet, uh, but the technique that I have used 
is to take measurements initially from segment 5 via an intercostal approach. You want minimal pressure on the transducer to avoid artifact. A good acoustic pathway, which means a clear image. We take six measurements, discard the highest and the lowest, and average the rest. Now, normally, if we're scanning a normal patient, uh, we will get very repeatable results with little variance and stop at this point. But if uh, we have a large variance, or if the measurements are abnormal, then we repeat these six samples in three other segments, so we can average over the liver as a whole. There are some artifacts in the left lobe of the liver uh, caused by cardiac pulsation, uh, which make it not a good starting point for our measurements. This is the curve for our normal population. And as you can see, uh, we had three patients who fit our normal criteria who had unexplained readings of greater than two meters per second. Uh, these all genuinely appear to be false positives as follow-up investigations which exclude biopsy have not shown any underlying chronic liver disease. So this is not quite a normal curve, but it approaches it. So this graph compares the normal curve with the curve of the cirrhotic patients. And as you can see, although there's good separation, there is some overlap in this small area here uh, at a level of about 1.6 meters per second. Uh, this gets even worse if we look at patients with fibrosis or without cirrhosis. And you can see, as you would expect, there is quite a lot of overlap down at the bottom end of the curve. Uh, this is the same data expressed as box whisker plots. And again, you can see the normal distribution is quite tight uh, with very little variance. Indeed, as is the fibrosis group, which is Ishak S2 to 5, uh, those with cirrhosis show almost total separation with the odd outlier here at uh, approximately two standard deviations. Uh, this is also a group of patients presenting with abnormal liver function tests, and as you can see, approximately half of them are outside the normal range, which is roughly what one would expect. This is the same data expressed in terms of numbers. Uh, the mean of the normal, 1.1 meters per second. The mean of the fibrosis, 1.7. Mean of cirrhosis, 3.0, uh, with some uh, differences in the standard deviations. But these differences between normal and fibrosis is highly significant at a P level of P005. This is a composite graph uh, from data from my own institution, but not done prospectively, where we've, I've plotted here the Ishak stage on the bottom of the graph versus the percentage of fibrosis determined by different methods. This curve shows the uh, percentage of fibrosis determined uh, by our optochemical means, showing a sigmoid curve uh, with very little change at the lower levels. The purple curve is fibroscan data, again showing almost an identical sigmoid curve. And the yellow triangles are my own ARFI data, which again fit these plots very precisely. So the correlation between the true percent of fibrosis within the liver and the ARFI or fibroscan data is an excellent uh, linear correlation. The problem is uh, with the nonlinear nature of the Ishak stage, uh, which doesn't quite fit the direct measurement of fibrosis. Um, there have been several other groups who have been studying ARFI in chronic liver disease uh, mainly in patients with HCV infection. And this is from one of them, from Romania, uh, where you can see the Metavir score here on the bottom of the scale uh, compared with the ARFI measurement on the left. And you can see the same um, sigmoid curve. Uh, the Metavir scale has only four points 
compared with six on the Ishak, but they can be transposed uh, virtually one to the other. But you can see again fairly tight uh, distributions, except for the cirrhotic patients, and this same sigmoid curve uh, fitting the data that I've just showed you. Uh, further data from uh, Germany, uh, published in Radiology two years ago, shows you also comparison between ARFI and Fibroscan. And although they haven't in this publication compared uh, directly patient uh, by patient, you can see the scatter plots of the data of the Fibroscan on the right and the ARFI on the left uh, looking very, very similar. And the ROC curves show effectively no significant difference between uh, ARFI imaging and transient elastography. And again, this is sensitivity over specificity with areas under the curve, no significant difference. So the two techniques, transient elastography or fibroscan and the ARFI quantification technique produce comparable results. Now, the fibroscan was invented over 10 years ago and there are now well over 100 patients, uh, papers documenting the results with some very large, well-constructed series uh, which document the effectiveness of the technique. It has an approximately 5% failure rate in obesity, ascites, and in acute liver disease because acute, significant acute inflammation will also tend to stiffen the liver. Fibroscan merely produces numbers. It has no imaging component. And it's a dedicated machine, which is of comparable cost uh, to a general purpose ultrasound machine. It does, however, produce a one-dimensional bulk tissue measurement right through the liver, whereas the ARFI is a small volume sampling technique. So in order to map variation within the liver, we need to take many samples. But this is, is changing. New technologies are coming uh, which will enable a two-dimensional ARFI mapping uh, to give us the same kind of bulk tissue measurement that we get with Fibroscan. So to conclude that we are producing uh, quantitative results with the ARFI technique, which are similar to those produced by Fibroscan. It's less prone to failure, and it is combined with a complete conventional ultrasound assessment. So it's effectively a one-stop shop. Now, what do we do with unexpected results? Uh, this has been a problem in my own study because I didn't get IRB approval to do liver biopsy on normal patients. And as we never and take biopsies from completely normal patients. They always have to have some clinical indication. Just doing correlations with biopsies will take a very long time to produce a normal range. So in any future studies, particularly concerned with screening, uh, we need to chase the false positives to determine if they are really false positives or not. Now there are other technologies uh, becoming available which all work on a similar principle using acoustic radiation force imaging. There is a French company, Supersonic Imagine, which produce real-time quantitative mapping of tissue stiffness using the ARFI technique. This has been applied mainly to superficial structures such as the breast and thyroid, and it does have a fairly low MI input, uh, which means that penetration into the liver is severely limited. And here we can see a superficial elastogram, quantitative elastogram produced in the breast. There's been a very recent study uh, presented only a few days ago by Minish Dayani from the Mass General attempting uh, quantification within the liver uh, using this new technique, which as you can see produces large regions of interest uh, or good bulk tissue measurements. Uh, this is his ROC curve, uh, which is as yet uh, not particularly impressive compared to Fibroscan or the other ARFI technique. But this is the very first study, very preliminary data, uh, which is really quite encouraging. So the message here is that 
there are already good data produced to show that acoustic radiation force imaging can produce quantitative measures of liver stiffness, which correlate extremely well uh, with other techniques. There are many new technologies coming, both improvements to ARFI from Siemens and from other companies, uh, using the same technology, which I think will extend this more widely to other tissues than the liver and produce uh, more accurate and reproducible results. Thank you.